Segment three, Golden Black Live. I want to thank our sponsors, Triple X, on the hill, but on the level of Purdue tradition since 1929. State Farm agent Trent Johnson and Hilton Garden in when tomorrow's a big day. State HDI tonight. And tomorrow is a big day for Purdue football as I'm joined by Tom Deanhart and Brian Newbert. I'll start with you, Tom. You know, it's funny. It just seems it's just different when you play Notre Dame and it just in terms of interest and everything I have playing, playing the fighting Irish and their fan base, et cetera. Yeah. The, the giant bass drum apparently isn't going to be able to get, get in there and all that kind of stuff is blown up uh, on Friday, but uh, playing Notre Dame is a big deal for Purdue. And uh, tomorrow will be a challenge at Notre Dame stadium for the Boilermakers. Uh, I would think you would agree with that. Yeah, I would. I, I'd agree with that wholeheartedly. Uh, it's a uh, it's a great, great opportunity for Purdue guys. We're one iconic venue and uh, a chance for Purdue to score. I think that the signature win of Jeff Brom's tenure at Purdue, as far as a road victory goes, guys. He's had a couple big ones. The one at Missouri his first year was was very impressive. I uh, crushed Illinois in 2018, and one at Iowa's first year too. But being the number ten. Yeah, yeah, Nebraska. Yeah, I I mean, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, again, that, that was a nice win, too. But, uh, you know, to beat the number 10 team in the country in their venue, and again, a, a program with the brand name of Notre Dame, obviously, would would be a nice uh, nice thing to hang your hat on for Jeff Brown. It would provide, I think, maybe a, a good uh, momentum boost moving forward here, guys. We all can agree on that. It would be 3-0. For the first time since 2007, uh, maybe, maybe it creaks into the polls for the first time since that year, uh, for whatever that's worth. But and more importantly, I think it'll be a good confidence boost with Illinois and then Minnesota coming to West Lafayette on the heels of this trip to South Bend. So uh, a lot of opportunity for the Boilermakers. And guys, I think you would agree with me. Uh, this is a Notre Dame team that uh, that just may be beatable for Purdue. Yeah, uh, I, I think it's there's always that chance, certainly based on what the Fighting Irish have done in weeks one and two, eking out wins, though, as I think Brian's written, no win at Florida State is easy, uh, and uh, Florida State has talent, but uh, certainly the Toledo game last week, a close one as well. Brian, a, a opportunity for Purdue, and, and, you know, you've seen seen things, it's been I mean, my gosh, I was thinking about now just when Tom talked about Notre Dame being in the top 10. I don't know the last top 10 victory victory by Purdue over a top 10 opponent on the road mm -hmm. might have to be all the way back to 1974 and uh, and uh, Purdue Notre Dame and that upset of the number two fighting Irish. But uh, Brian, uh, it, it's a big challenge tomorrow. What, what's your take on what, what we might see out of Purdue? Yeah, I mean, I think they're trending well. I think they've done everything you'd have wanted to see them do through the first two games. Now, obviously, the qualifier there is that Oregon State's, you know, going to be at the bottom of the of the of the Pac-12. Uh, UConn obviously is the bottom of Division One, so yeah. you have to kind of couch the results in the context of you know what uh, the level of competition was. But you can only play who's on your schedule, and outside of maybe taking advantage of a few more opportunities against Oregon state. Um, I think they've done everything you have wanted to them. You've wanted to see them do if you're a Purdue partisan here. I mean, obviously, you know, they've done a good enough job defensively. They've done a pretty good job defensively. I think that was one of the big questions. I think the quarterback play has been, has been good. Your stars have been something more than stars. Even I think George Karloftis and David Bell have been elite. Um, the line of scrimmage hasn't been, you know, bad to Purdue uh, so far. Obviously, UConn was warped reality, uh, and this will be a considerably different test than either of those last two things. So Purdue's trending well, uh, and this is kind of the ultimate measuring stick now because this is clearly the best team you ha have played uh, to this point, and at the line of scrimmage especially, that, you know, that's where the challenges probably lie more than anything. But, you know, I think Notre Dame's vulnerable you know, beatable and vulnerable can be two different things, I think. And uh, I think they're vulnerable. They've showed, showed they're vulnerable. And, uh, you know, Purdue should have reason to go up there with some confidence and some belief in itself. And, you know, I don't see why, you know, Purdue can't at the very least give them a pretty good run for their money. You know, Jeff Brom, uh, Tom, you talked to him Thursday night. 
uh, you always have the obligatory health questions and, and we don't know, we assume that uh, things are ho uh, hopefully from a Purdue perspective that they're as close to status quo as possible. Any vibe you got from him just about the way this team is put together uh, its practice this week and what we might expect uh, as if you can glean that from a, a conversation with the coach on a Thursday night? Yeah, obviously, of course, um, we all know about Xander Horvath being out. He's going to make the trip. You know, he's from Mishawaka, which is near South. Yeah. He's going to have a lot of family there. Very important for him to be up at that game. He really, of course, wish he could have played. Um, what a dream come true that would have been for him to have played uh, near his hometown in that iconic stadium up there. Uh, and, of course, Garrett Miller, we asked Coach Brom about the sophomore tight end who was dinged up at UConn. Jeff Brom said, quote, It'll be a game time decision. Of course, Jarrett's a nice cog in that offense behind Payne Durham, plays in a lot of two tight end sets. Then I asked Coach Brom about just the general health of the team heading into Saturday. Is everybody ready to go? He's, he just said, we'll see. We had a few things happen this week. And we'll get all the guys we can. They're healthy and look forward to it. So maybe that was a little cryptic when he said we had a few things happen this week. We'll have to stay tuned. And uh, see who's on the field come 2.30 Eastern time on on uh, on Saturday. But, again, Purdue needs all of its its, its weapons and, and top players. We all understand that. So there's always obstacles to overcome, right? Injuries are part of the game. I know Purdue's had its fair share in recent years. Notre Dame's big left tackle, Blake Fisher, has been out. They may have their third team tackle in trying to block George Carl Loftus. So, again, um, everybody's got something they can cry over. So we'll have to wait and see. Again, he was all suited up on Sally for the Boilermakers. Uh, again, like I said, a great opportunity. I think guys, maybe, you know, Brian talked about the offensive lines. I think whoever offensive line maybe plays the best wins this game. I mean, the, each of these units has, has something to prove. Uh, it's a work in progress. Which front can, can really get something established for their offense? Again, it may go a long way toward helping their school win on Saturday. Brian, you've also mentioned, and, and it really is an important thing that Purdue has, has it's close there's you know, Notre Dame's got a couple of stars at tight end and then defensive backfield but Purdue may have the two best players on the team or on the field with George Karloftis and David Bell that puts Purdue in an interesting and good position going into most games uh, and yet uh, you know you, you would think if you're going to win a game like this to, you know tomorrow if you're Purdue George Karloftis is going to have to wreak some havoc uh, on Notre Dame's uh, Notre Dame's passing game but also it's run game these two guys can make a big difference and can uh, carry a team to victory just by their skill set. Yeah, this is one of those games where, you know, Purdue might have the two best players on the field, but it's not by as wide a margin as it will be in a yeah, lot of other no games. Doubt. Michael Mayer might be the best tight end in the country, the best receiving tight end in the country. They've got some guys in their secondary uh, who are obviously really good. And Notre Dame in general is going to have players all over the field. Um, but yeah, I mean, as I said before, you know, a big part of your winning formula this year for Purdue, if you're going to have the sort of season you really want to have after two disappointing seasons was you got two first round picks on your team potentially. And those guys had to live up. Uh, they had to be great. They had to be consistent. They had to be consistently great, if you will. And <laughs> through two games, you know, obviously it's only two games, um, but George Karloftis has been elite. David Bell has been elite. And they've been something even more than I think people could have could have reasonably expected. George Karloftis is affecting every snap he's on the field. Yeah. Um, his numbers don't reflect it, but he is affecting every snap. And I know it was only UConn, but David Bell, you know, took that game over unlike anything you're going to see in a wide receiver very often. Uh, that was like Rondell Moore in the second half against Ohio State. That was Anthony Mahangu at Iowa a few years ago. I can't believe I'm comparing David Bell to Anthony Mahangu. <laughs> But it is what it is. I mean, he was the singular force in that game. He put that game away in the first half, almost single-handedly offensively. And both of those guys have just been absolutely elite. And to win at Notre Dame, you know, chances are your best players are going to have to be your best players, and then some. You look at the you know you look at the, the Anthony Spencer and Ray Edwards year uh, when yeah. Purdue won up there. You look at the Kyle Orton Taylor Stubblefield year up there. Your best players have to be unbelievable to win games like this and I think Purdue has two great players who are playing great so that that that's a pretty significant I, I guess reason for optimism yeah that 2004 game was Anthony Spencer's coming out party that first half was both of those guys just, were just, yeah. just dominant uh, in uh, in that game and of course uh, 
the 97 yard pass from Orton to Stubblefield uh, still makes Purdue fans happy every time, every time they watch it. All right, uh, Tom quarterbacking, you know, we, we just, we had Mike Phipps on in segment one. And of course uh, he had the, had the opportunity to beat Notre Dame three straight years, Purdue quarterbacks kind of are made, you know, there really aren't many, there aren't any of the cradle. I I'm trying to think here of the true, true elite quarterbacks that haven't beaten Notre Dame. Uh, going all the way back to Len Dawson and Dale Samuels, you know, go through the whole list. Bob Greasy only did it once, but Phipps did it three times. My point is Jack Plummer has an opportunity. I know this is not his, he's not worried about Dale Samuels. I understand that. Uh, but quarterbacks, Purdue quarterbacks can be made. Their, their, their legacy can be made by this game. And uh, this is a real opportunity for Jack Plummer to, to step up. And uh, he's been good so far. Uh, but can he be good enough or even great to, to get the job done at South Bend? Uh, that's going to be an interesting storyline tomorrow. Yeah, I sort of wrote about that this week. Uh, this could be his seminal moment, guys. Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe the, if you will, signature, signature performance. Probably going to have to be, right? Now, let's not kid ourselves. Like you said, Alan, the, the elite quarterbacks in West Lafayette over the years have found a way to beat the Fighting Irish, and, you, and Jim Ever did it twice. Well, Kyle Orton did it twice, 2003, 2004. Drew Brees did it once. I almost did it three times. He lost close games in 98. Oh, yeah, terrible games. Time. I'm sure we're going to see yeah. a lot of highlights of that on Saturday's broadcast, right? Uh, but I digress. This is a great opportunity for Jack Plummer. Redshirt Jr. He's got to have confidence, right? He knows the playbook. This will be about his 11th career start. And this, this could be his moment. And I, I've said they're probably going to have to throw 50 passes Saturday if they want to win. I, I don't see Purdue um, getting a lot of traction on the ground game. I know they don't have to run for 200 yards. I know they have to manufacture a run game. Maybe they can do that. I still think, man, you know what? You're Purdue. You got to ride with your strength. And we all know what the strength is. You got this array of wide receivers. We know the roll call from Bell to Wright, to Sheffield. To, to Brock Thompson, Jackson Anthrop, uh, Mershon Rice, plus Payne Durham, right? I mean, Purdue's got its own, I think, uh, blue chip tight end as well. So, again, why not try to win your game with those guys instead of trying to hand the ball off to, to running backs who are just kind of okay? Um, so, we'll see. But, again, I think this could be a big moment for Jack Plummer. Like I said, it's probably going to have to be if Purdue wants to get out of South Bend with its first win since, since 2004. So, Big moment for the kid from Arizona to, 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 to maybe join that elite company of three quarterbacks to take down the Irish, especially guys to take them down up there. And Brian, I don't want to get too deep in the weeds here, but I do think that the Jack Plummer factor just can be a validation also of, of Jeff Brom and recruiting and all mm -hmm. this, because this is a guy they really wanted a few years ago. He's, he's, yeah. he's shown up, you know, this is Tom said his hits his 11th start. But an opportunity to to really showcase yourself, uh, not only on a, a national TV, but showcase prospects that to hey, we're we're back, and we being Purdue, and we we have the ability to attract some really interesting talent. Uh, seems like a great opportunity for that tomorrow as well. Yeah, I've kind of said that before about this whole season is that this season is a good, I guess, weather balloon for. Jeff Brom as the quarterback developer, you know, at Western Kentucky, he never really had enough time to take a freshman and develop that player into, into a starter. I, you know, a few of the guys he had, I think he either inherited or, or might've even transferred in uh, at Purdue. He inherited David Blau and Elijah Sindelar, uh, obviously um, Plummer in his first recruiting class was the guy he wanted. And this is really the first probably time in his head coaching career that he's handpicked his high school quarterback, mm -hmm. gotten that kid in his program, worked him up through the ranks, and now we'll see how it pans out. Through two games, he's been really good. I thought the fourth yeah. quarter against Oregon State was, was, you know, potentially a really significant moment in his career. But this whole season, Jack Plummer's play to me um, is one of the big, I guess, tells on – I don't want to overstate this, but I, I think it's significant to see how that plays out in terms of how it fits into the big picture of where Purdue's program is and where it's going and all of that stuff. And uh, this is obviously a big opportunity for Jack Plummer. I mean, it, it's a hard thing to do to win as a quarterback in South Bend. I mean, I don't know how much time they're going to spend on the broadcast 
talking yeah. to talking to Drew Brees about his first start at Notre Dame when he, if I recall correctly, basically threw the game away on the interception by Tony Driver. Not to say that he yeah. didn't play well to put them in that position. Yeah, two in the fourth quarter, right? Two yeah. in the fourth quarter. Yeah. The game in 2000 was a comedy of, of errors that had nothing to do with the quarterback. Um, but that place has some ghosts for quarterbacks making their first <laughs> yeah. start. And, uh, you know, Jack Plummer's going to have to strive to be a ghostbuster here. Um, it's it's not going to be easy, but, uh, you know, through two games, he's done everything I think you could ask of him. You got to get, you got to wash Gary Godsey out of your, out of your mindset. And I know that's not in Jeff, Brom's, Jeff Brom's mindset, but it still is in mine. It's and almost the fact poetic. That game, the kid Purdue recruited as a tight end. I love Jim Drew Cheney Brees, as an, off, head to head. an offensive, yeah, an offensive coordinator. And Purdue, for some reason, chose to throw the ball 22 times in that game or something like that. It's kind of crazy. But, but anyway, that I digress. And that this is our problem. It's not, luckily, it's not Purdue. These kids were born that when that happened, I think. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, we want to thank our sponsors, Triple X, Hilton Garden, and State Farm Agent Trent Johnson, and WLFI Gordon and the folks at WLFI for making this happen. Uh, we will be back. And we'll also, also thank Mike Phipps and Ken Halpin also for joining us today. A really interesting show, and we appreciate them. We'll be back next week. Now, next week, we're working on lining up. You know, It's going to be uh, uh, Purdue, Illinois, prior the day before that. But uh, the Drew Brees team, the 2001 Rose Bowl team, We'll be back, Drew. I don't know that we'll get Drew on the show next week, but we'll try. But uh, we'll have some some folks from that team to, to, to talk about that as well. And I'm sure there'll be a lot else to hit uh, as we look forward to the Purdue-Illinois game next week. So, guys, have a good rest of the weekend. Tom, safe travels to South Bend. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, Golden Black Live next week. And we appreciate all of you for watching and uh, taking this in and we'll look for an interesting game tomorrow in South Bend. Have a good one, guys.